Get a small team together of people, like-minded people, who are passionate about your film. You write from your heart and passion and instinct first and foremost. You're gonna tap into some universal stuff. Don't show guns. Comedy tells the truth, and specifically it tells the truth about people. There's a lot of talented people that never make it because they don't understand the business. Author and screenwriter Joe Guilford joins us today. He's going to give us some pointers on writing dialogue in your screenplay. How much is enough and how much is too much? This episode is brought to you by Glidecam Stabilizers. A Glidecam on your production means smooth, flowing shots with easy operation. Go to Glidecam.com to find out more. Today we have Joe Guilford, author of Why Does the Screenwriter Cross the Road? And he's got some pointers for us. Joe, what are we going to talk about today? Hey, Morris, how you doing? It's great to see you again and great to be on Rolling Tape. You know, what's been bugging me about what my students are doing and a lot of new screenwriters is, is dialogue. And there's a lot of myths about dialogue. My favorite is the one where people say, I write really good dialogue. I'm sure I can write a great screenplay. Screenplays are all dialogue, aren't they? I wish that were true. If screenplays were all dialogue, it would be radio. And <laughs> that, that's yep. really the myth of some of people writing a dialogue. Dialogue is actually just as much a work of art as your story. Just a much, as much a creation as your characters. Dialogue is not really what people say. It's what they say when they don't want to say the thing that's really true. And that's the most dramatic dialogue you can have. Uh, dialogue can convey so many things. We know it can convey information. That can be a bad habit too. We know it can convey character. But again, that can be uh, the reverse of what you think it is. And of course, dialogue can convey emotion. Somebody simply the way. But you have to also respect what I see as the actor's skills in taking what you've written as, as a, a language and transforming it into action. So you have to have some respect for that. Um, some of the rules, I not rules, well, yeah, they're rules. Don't break these rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, rules are meant to be followed, also meant to sometimes not be followed. But a lot of the things that I try to follow when I write dialogue is don't write obvious expo exposition. Uh, for example, um, in, in a scene where somebody is telling their life story and how they feel and, and where they, what they're going to do next. In the old movies, voiceover used to do that too. Uh, characters can talk about one thing. But the actual spoken word may mean something else. And that's what we've known as subtext. This, I believe, the strongest tool you can have in dialogue. Because a good actor can take a phrase like, hi, how you doing? And turn it into, hi, how you doing? And it becomes something much different than that. In fact, I'll give you a great instance of dialogue. If Ferris, Ferris, if you could just ad lib to me, anything you want to say at all for just a short period of time. Okay, Joe, uh, how was your trip uh, that you took down south? Was that good? Oh, you want more? I think I lost you, Joe. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Oh. I was proving the value of silence. Oh, <laughs> and I hope your, your viewers can get that. So many people don't understand the value of silence. I picked up so much power as a character in that exchange. You thought everything had gone wrong simply because mm -hmm. I didn't talk. Mm -hmm. And what happens in a scene where a character is silent is they pick up so much power. You'll see this in a lot of the great interrogation scenes in crime dramas or in double in the uh, 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 James Bond movies as well, where a character, very powerful characters, don't talk. It really is great, the power of silence. And there are a lot of great scenes where people just simply listen. I was just watching Network a few weeks ago. And there's an amazing scene where Peter Finch as Howard Beale, the mad broadcast is brought into a conference with Ned Beatty, who's the head of a huge, huge media and uh, uh, corporate conglomerate. And he has what is a seven-minute monologue 
that Beale, Peter Finch, does not respond to except with a look of absolute terror. So that gives that character a lot of uh, power in that scene. The opposite of, uh, of good dialogue, I believe, is what I call on-the-nose dialogue. That's where characters say exactly what they're feeling. And then, you know, and, and that, what that does is it puts all the drama into their mouth. And it doesn't, it takes it out of the actual scene and the action. Another thing I caution people about, and this has a lot to do with the, what location and, and culture you're depicting in your movie, but watch out for profanity. And I'm not a morals guy. I'm not trying to censor people at all. We all know certain movies just, you, you're, you're setting a movie in a certain atmosphere. You need the profanity that really is on people's butt. You have to understand how it comes out on the page and how it comes out to the ear of the audience. And that is, uh, profanity is like a gunshot, I like to say. It's always startling when people use profanity. Now, in real life, we use profanity probably too easily. And it ceases to be profane. And in that sense, George Carlin, comedians like uh, uh, Lenny Bruce, and even uh, Richard Pryor, use profanity to such an extent that they actually devalue the power of those words. So you have to watch out how you use your words because you can actually devalue if you use them too much. So if you're always winding a character up to be talking constantly, that can actually be part of their character. A character like, I just can't stop talking right now, Forrest, and I'm not letting you ask a question, and that says something about who I am. And then the character who I did a moment ago, the silent, powerful character. These are great tips for you listening while you write. So you're going to play the powerful character again and just stop like that, right? <laughs> no, that's great advice. Like a good, also in good interviews. I watched an interview on the news the other day. If you just stop, you've made your point. Yeah. And now to go back to profanity. Uh, when you have a character, when you write a script and all the characters swear, um, and I've seen that done before, sure. uh, what, what does that say? Well, let's look at uh, Black Mass. Wonderful okay. movie with Johnny Depp, set in the world of the Boston and the Irish criminal gangs. How, you, how are you going to depict that accurately? How are you going to really capture the, the style of that life if, but I'll tell you this, the car and also the cops use just as much profanity as well. And what happens is you get this sort of merger of worlds, and actually, that's what the movie's about. Because it's about a district attorney who can't, who can't really manage the boundaries he has, and he becomes just like a criminal. Criminal. Um, Donnie Brasco is a good example. Plenty of profanity in that, but Donnie Brasco himself, being an undercover FBI agent, becomes and evolves into this new character. This he transforms into a, a mafia uh, crew member in that movie. Um, in The Departed, another cop movie, another cops and criminals, also set in the uh, uh, the New England uh, Irish gangs. Again, the profanity, but. If you were to put that in Pride and Prejudice or in um, uh, the King's Speech, imagine the King's Speech with even one profane word it has nothing to do with the movie's rating, really. But it does have to do with the culture that you set it in. So I would say be careful. That's really it. Be thoughtful with how you use profanity in dialogue and also be thoughtful as to what your characters are saying. Another nice little trick I use is a uh, phrase I use is information for the characters, not the audience. Mm -hmm. This is wonderful because in, if you're writing an action picture or a crime drama or a espionage drama or anything in which you need to, you do need to convey some information to the audience, you can smuggle it to the audience by giving it to a character. And if you set it up properly, that information will get to where it's going. All right, Joe, thanks for joining me uh, today. Always I appreciate it. I love, I love being on the show, and, uh, and I'll see you next time. 
the versatile, lightweight GlideCam Stabilizer. A GlideCam on your production means smooth, flowing video with easy operation. GlideCam, the name and future of camera stabilizers.